My name is Jerome Boyd Kirkup, and I'm the co-founder and chief scientific officer of Hummingbird Bioscience. And today, I wanted to talk to you about rewiring reality through innovation. Let's start at the beginning of my story. In 2013, my friend and co-founder Piers Ingram and I had a big idea. An idea that we thought may just change the world. And our idea was that the application of all of these computational technologies that were being developed in a variety of different fields, if they were applied in the right way to understand complex human diseases, we could use them to design new drugs to precisely treat those diseases. But it's important to know that an idea in and of itself is not an innovation. An innovation is an idea that has been transformed into a practical reality. And here you'll see Thomas Edison, one of the most famous inventors and innovators who repeatedly turned ideas into innovations. And today I'd like to take you on that journey of an idea to an innovation. All ideas start with insight. Insight arises from our observations of the world around us. Right now we're at a time of unprecedented exposure to data. Data is all around us. Sometimes it can even feel overwhelming and that we're like we're drowning in data. But I'd encourage everybody to look at that data, ask questions of the data, because with that you can have insight and then you can seed new ideas. Our particular insight came from our careers working in applying some of these new technologies to better understand human disease in the field of biotechnology and also about building different teams of different scientific disciplines to go about looking at problems from different directions. This was a field that was becoming known as systems biology. Now, we saw the power in these systems biology approaches, but we also saw that these approaches weren't being used in drug discovery and development, or if they were, they weren't really being used in the right way. Drug discovery and development still really relied on trial and error, a traditional approach that unfortunately failed, failed big, failed expensive time and time again. So with insight comes ideas, but ideas can sometimes seem like the easy part. I'm sure you've all had ideas. Doing something about those ideas can be hard. Which ideas do we pick to work on? There's not enough time to work on all our ideas. How do we know if it's a good idea? And so I'd encourage you, first of all, not to rule out any ideas, not to say, hey, I'm not an expert in this field. I haven't been working at it for 50 years. My idea isn't that important. Ideas can come from the most unlikely places or unlikely people. And somebody who's been working in that field for 20 years may actually not be able to see the wood from the trees. Whereas somebody who comes into that field with a different perspective may have a brilliant idea on day one. How about, however, having an idea is just the first step. You have to develop that idea, test that idea out, figure out if it's really an idea you want to take forward. For us, we talked about it. We talked about it with our friends, we talked about it with our colleagues, we talked about it with experts that we could find in the field. We then thought about ways we could test that idea to see if it was good and how much that would cost. But remember, at some point, you have to turn that idea into something, and that requires action. Turning an idea into an innovation can seem like a mammoth task, but it's worthwhile. Development of our innovation has taken us a long time, and it's still ongoing. We've built a whole team of people around pursuing this innovation. We initially started testing our ideas, uh, just Piers and I, just with uh, a, a few outsourced experiments in China, just to you know test some of those initial ideas to see if they worked. And they did. And with that, we started a company. And we took those ideas further. And we built the team. But it still took two more years to really have the platform ready and those technologies ready. And it took two more years for us to start developing some new drugs. So in the next few slides, I just want to briefly explain to you our innovation in a bit more detail and how we're applying it to build drugs that may transform the lives of people with hard to treat diseases such as cancer. Now, the best way that I can describe our technology 
is it a, it's an application of computational methodologies that allow us to understand disease-associated proteins, and through that understanding, predict how we can counteract that uh, action um, to treat the disease. So, the story here is is this protein called HER3, which is known to be a key driver for many tumors. Now, our computational modeling showed that uh, when the pink protein came in contact with the blue protein, we had a signal that went to the tumor cell and that told the cancer to grow. And our methodology went one step further. It said, well, the best way to, 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 to counteract that would be to design a, uh, an, a drug that bound on that important interface between the two proteins and prevent them from pairing. Therefore, no signal and the tumor stops growing. It also explained to us why previous efforts to drug HER3 had failed. You can see here in blue the sites of binding of all of the previous drug candidates against HER3. And as you can see, they're on the wrong side of the protein from where our predictions said they should be. So we had to use a different aspect of our technology that allowed us to design a precise antibody drug that bound to that important interface and that would stop that protein from binding to its other proteins and stop those signals. And when we tested that drug, which we call Hummingbird 001, we could see that it could completely stop the growth of the tumor in our laboratories. You can see that with the red line, which is the treated um, tumors versus the black line, which is the untreated tumors which grow out of control. Now I'm excited to say that Hummingbird 001 will be entering clinical trials this month in patients with some really tough cancers. And so I'm really excited to see the benefit that we can give to those patients. So how did we deliver this innovation? And how can we continue to encourage innovation in other sectors? It's a common uh, question that's asked by people, companies, uh, even countries. How do we encourage more innovation? And with the perspective of delivering our own innovation, I would say that there are three things that are required to deliver on innovation, and I call them the three C's. Courage, capabilities, and capital. So let's start with courage. When I, mean, when I say courage, I mean the courage to commit to an idea. Now, for most of you, completing a degree is absolutely the right choice, and that gives you options for the future. But at some point, you're going to want to weigh the risks and, and decide whether it's the right time to pursue your idea. When you do commit, do it 100%. Otherwise, other things in your life will distract you or get in your way. And remember, the pursuit of this innovation is, is not going to be smooth. It's okay to fail sometimes as long as you learn from those failures and keep pushing forward. At Hummingbird, we've developed a culture of hardworking, curious individuals who are not afraid to take risks and not afraid to fail sometimes. If things fail, we encourage people to be transparent, to discuss the, the problem and to solve the problem together because we succeed and fail together as a team. So don't get defeated by these few setbacks. Drug discovery is especially prone to, to failures and setbacks, um, and, and, and many other uh, areas are as well. But doing new things is never going to be an easy or smooth process. You have the courage to keep solving the problems, keep making decisions that push you forward. Now, the, th the second C is capabilities. And the first important capability is people. One of those people is yourself. You need to make sure you're as educated as you can be in the area that you're trying to innovate in. But it's important to also know that delivering an innovation is never gonna be a solo effort. You're gonna need a team around you. You're gonna need to be honest about your strengths and weaknesses, and then find people who have the strengths where you're weak. Bring them into the team and create a really strong team together. For example, if you're not an expert in computers, find one, bring them into the team. If you're not an expert in uh, cancer biology, find one, bring them into the team. If you're not an expert in budgets and accounting, find one, bring them into the team. That's how you build a great team. The second part is, that's going to be required to deliver on your innovation is technology. 
you know, we all use the technology around us, and that gets us where we need to go. You need to identify that technology, but you also have to have a bit of that courage to say, if that technology doesn't exist, create it yourself, figure it out, solve the problem. Thirdly, you need a space to work. You need a country or a city, you need a community, you need an ecosystem that will support you as you deliver that innovation. For example, we needed to find laboratories to perform experiments in. Luckily, we found our first home in Singapore and some great laboratories. That's where we founded the company. But since then, as the innovation has developed, as the company has grown, we've needed to find other people, other technologies, other places that have what we need to succeed. That's why we are now uh, 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 based in both the Singapore and the US and have built a team of over 80 people across both of those countries. The final C is capital, money. Money is necessary to pursue innovation. I mean, our first tests uh, with those little labs in China were actually paid for with our own credit cards. I mean, we're not rich or, or, or having you know, millions of dollars in our bank account to, to, to fund all of the work that we've done. Uh, but we believed in ourselves enough to set a budget and try something. This allowed us to get that first data that supported the founding of the company and allowed us to raise money from friends and family. That allowed us to build the company, get more data. We then went through a series of fundraising rounds, a Series A, where we raised $8 million in 2016. The Series B, where we raised $25 million in 2019. This is where we could really grow our operations in Singapore and the US, build our team. And now, in 2021, we just closed our $125 million Series C round. This now gives us the money that we need to do those very expensive clinical trials in human patients, really start to test out some of those, um, those drugs that we've created. Now, remember that when you're raising money, not all money costs the same. Um, when you don't have any money, you're kind of at the mercy of the investors who will take advantage of you. Don't sell the farm. You need to be clever about not selling too much of your business um, too early on because you're going to need more money down the line. Raise a little bit of money now, set a good budget, and make sure that you deliver uh, with that money on the data that will be required or the, the results that you need to allow you to raise that next uh, amount of money. Also, not all money is worth the same. Find investors who will bring added value. An investor who can, I don't know, give you advice on your innovation or has a network of other uh, investors that they know and can help you to raise more money. Having a trustworthy investor bet on you actually helps you down the line to raise more money. It's something that we've learned from those very first days when we had to knock on 100 doors to convince somebody to, to invest. And uh, today, uh, people are actually coming to us, asking us to invest in the company. So, what's next? We've delivered this innovation, we've created a couple of new drugs, but it doesn't stop there. We now have a team of fantastic individuals who work better as an as a innovative uh, drug discovery and development team, and they continue to innovate. We're innovating in other disease areas beyond cancer, such as autoimmunity. And together we have a vision of delivering the best drug to the right patient. So, I want to leave you with a final thought, and that is that the path to rewiring reality through innovation requires insight and ideas, but more importantly, requires a lot of hard work from a great team with courage, capabilities, and capital. Thank you.